The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, honored a group of shops and commercial establishments that benefited from the national initiative launched by the Consumer Protection Directorate at the ministry. The initiative is concerned with exempting businesses from promotional campaign fees during December, coinciding with the National Day celebrations. Throughout November to December 2023, 1,122 establishments participated in the initiative, which witnessed a great turnout from businesses across all governments. This initi initiative was initiated by the Ministry to encourage the commercial sector to participate in the Kingdom's festivities and to increase the number of consumers visiting commercial avenues at that time. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Tawfiqi, chaired the second meeting of the Youth Empowerment Committee in the public and private sectors in the presence of the committee members. At the beginning of the meeting, Tawfiqi expressed appreciation for the efforts exerted by the committee members to achieve the vision of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to achieve the committee's goals, which aim to highlight the initiatives of youth empowerment, develop their skills in various fields, integrate their needs into the strategic plan of the public and private sectors, find opportunities for training, scholarship and professional promotion according to their capabilities and ambition, achieving their aspirations, listening to their ideas and including them in development operations in the two sectors. The meeting then discussed the items on the, the agenda. Under the patronage of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation brief, organized a veterinary examination in preparation for the launch of the His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa Endurance Cup. The veterinary examination of the horses participating in the races was held in Bahrain International Endurance Village under the supervision of the Arbitration and Veterinary Committees amid a distinguished organization from all the committee that worked to facilitate the process of examining and numbering the horses, in addition to the process of weighing the horses and the riders. Brief expressed appreciation for His Highness's continuous support for endurance sports. The Bahrain International Endurance Village will host the international qualifying races for the distance of 120 kilometers, 100 kilometer, the local race of a distance of 100 kilometer, the local qualifying races for a distance of 40 kilometer and 80 kilometer, and the local sun's race for a distance of 60 kilometers. The judges a committee praised the cooperation of the jockeys and stables and their keenness to follow the instructions and implement them for a smooth examination. The Ministry of Health called on guardians to administer the latest booster shot against COVID-19 and its variants to their children aged between 5 and 11. The Ministry said that the vaccine is available in Halat Bumahir Health Center, Hamad Kano Health Center and Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Al Sabah Health Center, adding that guardians can take their children to the health centers without making an appointment and that the vaccination will be available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It also emphasized the importance of vaccination vaccination for enhancing immunity and reducing the symptoms of the virus and its complications. The University of Bahrain ranked first at the local level in the World University Ranking Green Metric for the year 2023 and 25th in the world in education and research. More in this report. As a result of its continuous and diligent work, the University of Bahrain ranked first at the local level in the World University Ranking Green Metric for the year 2023, and 25th at the global level in the field of education and research following its adoption of a number of important projects that highlighted its efforts in this ranking. The university was able to excel in water management with a score of 90%, and in programs for rationalizing water consumption, water recycling, consumption of treated water, and combating water pollution on campus. As for infrastructure, it obtained a score of 85% for the green spaces on the campus, open spaces, and the university's budget directed towards sustainability. 
As for education and research, the university obtained a full score and came in 25th globally in sustainability courses, financing sustainability-related research, publications, events, and the annual percentage of student activities related to sustainability. The University of Bahrain is continuously working to achieve greater progress in the other categories and hopes to confirm its commitment to implementing the goals of national, regional and global sustainability plans. The Real Estate Regulatory Authority RERA's Director of Information and Real Estate Development Department, Dr. Hamad Hazim, presented Aqari Platform Services to the Capital Municipalities Council. He emphasized that Aqari Platform has cooperated with 12 government agencies in its launching. Aqari came in an implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to launch a platform to invigorate investments. Dr. Hamad explained during his presentation the real estate information related to all governorates, the number of lands, apartments and houses available. He explained that through this map, the subscriber previews the property's area in square meters and the price per square foot in the area. Dr. Hazim added that everyone can view real estate trading in Bahrain in general, in addition to the possibility of specifically a certain area to highlight the trading operations in it. That platform has a graf uh, the a geographical analysis for all governments that reviews the trading volume, a price and all real estate details. The Director of Information and Real Estate Development Department indicated that the existing information is updated every three days, noting that RERA is currently working on making the update immediate to facilitate the process for the buyer in providing direct and up-to-date information. The Kingdom of Bahrain has condemned and denounced the terrorist explosions that took place in the city of Kirman, southeast of the Islamic Republic of Iran, killing and injuring dozens of civilians. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed sincere condolences and sympathy to the victims' families and relatives, as well as to the Iranian government, wishing the wounded a speedy recovery. The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTAA, announced the festival city attracted over 100,000 visitors, showcasing the success of Celebrate Bahrain. The Celebrate Bahrain included family, musical, cultural and sporting events held across various governorates of the kingdom for a month in celebration with various partners coinciding with Bahrain's national days. The Celebrate Bahrain concluded with a successful celebration, with nearly 7,000 people at Water Garden City and 21,800 at Marathi El Bahrain. The event also saw a large presence in Bahrain Bay, Bahrain Harbour, Financial Center, Bahrain Fort, Bahrain National Museum and the Najma Club. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima bin Jafar al-Sirifi, said the public turnout was remarkable, particularly in the festival city events and closing celebrations. She praised the program for exceeding expectations and enriching the experiences of citizens, residents, tourists and visitors. The minister expressed gratitude to guests and participants in Celebrate Bahrain, as well as supporting bodies and partners. as emphasized their responsibility to provide innovation and diversity in the tourism programs, enriching the tourist season and organizing more events throughout the year. For his part, CEO of BTA, Dr. Nasser Qaidi, highlighted the diverse activities during Celebrate Bahrain and the exclusive promotions that successfully attracted a large number of tourists from around the world, which offered various tourism events and activities to cater to all tastes. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, issued an Emiri order appointing Sheikh Dr. Mohammed Sabah Al Salim Al Sabah as Prime Minister of Kuwait. The order issued following traditional uh, consultations, also assigned to him in a form of government, and submit uh, the lineup to His Highness the Emir to issue a decree of their appointment. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia rejected statements made by Israeli ministers calling for the return of settlers to Gaza and the displacement of Gazans. 
The kingdom stressed that action should be taken against Israelis' violations of international laws and expressed its condemnation and categorical rejection of the extremist remarks by two ministers and the Israeli occupation government. A statement by the foreign ministry said the Israeli ministers called for the displacement of the population of Gaza, the reoccupation of the Strip and the construction of settlements. A joint statement was issued by the governments of the United States, Australia, Bahrain, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, New Zealand, Singapore and the United Kingdom on maintaining security of international maritime navigation. The statement confirmed that the Houthi attacks that are continuing in the Red Sea are illegal, unacceptable and highly destabilizing. It said uh, there is no legal justification for deliberately targeting civilian ships and naval vessels. The statement also stressed that attacks on ships including commercial vessels, using drones, small boats and missiles including the first use of anti-ship ballistic missiles against these vessels constitute a direct threat to the freedom of navigation that forms the basis of global trade. The statement explained that these attacks threaten the lives of innocent people and constitute a major international problem that requires collective action as the movement of food, fuel and vital humanitarian aid around the world is at risk. The coalition of countries called for the immediate end of these attacks, adding that the Houthis will bear the responsibility of the consequences should they continue to threaten lives, the global economy and free flow of commerce in the region's critical waterways. Jordanian Prime Minister Bashar al khassawna met the United Arab Emirates Minister of State for Foreign Trade, Thani bin Ahmed al -Zayoudi. The Jordanian Prime Minister underscored the profound fraternal relations between Jordan and the UAE and expressed Jordan's backing for the UAE as it hosts the 13th Ministerial Conference of the World Trade Organization in the first quarter of this year. The conference will see the participation of ministers and officials from the organization's 164 member states, with high-level Jordanian officials also attending. The Jordanian Prime Minister commended the UAE for successfully hosting the COP28 last month, during which several important initiatives were announced. For his part, SAUD underscored the depth of fraternal relations between both countries, showcasing their distinction across various levels. UK authorities continue to issue hundreds of flood warnings after strong winds and, and rain hit large parts of the United Kingdom, causing flood disruptions and power outages. Travel has been seriously disrupted after Storm Hemp battered a large area of the UK. Large parts of England and Wales experienced strong winds and heavy rain during the storm. More than 250 flood warnings are in place in England, while thousands of homes are without power. When gusts of 94 meter per hour were recorded at the needles of the Isle of Wight and 71 meter per hour winds in Mumbles Head in South Wales, but the storm also struck inland with Exeter Airport experiencing gusts of 81 meter per hour. The weather forecast says further flooding, travel disruption and power cuts may occur. The storm that has now largely moved into Scandinavia. Winds are forecast to be lighter and there will be also sunnier spells during the rest of the week. A 72-hour window to find survivors from the January 1st earthquake in Japan approached, with word that the death toll had risen and more people are now unaccounted for. There were fears that victims trapped under collapsed buildings from the magnitude 7.6 earthquake in Ishikawa Prefecture would start succumbing to dehydration, hypothermia and psychological stress. As of today, the death toll from the earthquake stood at 84. Authorities said the figure included 48 fatalities in Wajima and 23 in Suzu, both cities in the Noto Peninsula. Prefectural officials said 79 people remained unaccounted for. The number of people who suffered injuries totaled 305, some seriously. Dozens of people are believed to remain trapped under collapsed buildings. <laughs> 